respected chairman dr algo sundaram co chairman nachiket kotwali wale distinguished uh, panelist excuse sir yes excuse sir can you put it in the full screen modes i will do that i will do that when i go on presentation mode okay sir Thank because you. till that time i cannot see you guys okay because it goes away i think something like that happens in my computer okay sir so i uh, it's it is a pleasure for me to speak on this very important topic because as nachiket told that the uh, britishers came to our country because of the spices so we blame spices for our 200 for their 200 years rule on us though we lacked in entrepreneurship and that is why they ruled on us if we had spices to sell through those people we could have gone to europe for opening up the big shops and then they would not have come to our country so that is the one thing of the spices that because of that the britishers came to our country but another aspect which has come to the light now because of the covid that because of the spices we have survived this covid because we have the largest immunity we may not be strong enough strength and immunity they are different things and that immunity we had because we were consuming the spices day in and day out in our food and then during this time we started taking kadhas that is concoction of few spices together and not only we were taking the whole world started taking and uh, that is why we are very proud that we are the spice land and we are the spice uh, what do you call hub for the world if you look at because we are highly populated country so whatever we grow we consume more so spices also the same thing happens do we produce lot but 90% of that we are consumed by our own people and that is the advantage we have during covid time because they had the inbuilt immunity to fight against this virus we export spices to the world maybe only 10 to 12% or 16% that's what they say but we meet 70% of the world's spice requirement of course along with us few other countries newer that uh, like vietnam and all other countries they have also come in growing the spice but we are sure that with our land with our soil type with our weather condition we have the best quality of the spices only thing is that scientists should come out with the comparative analysis of the spices grown in those countries where they are newly introduced and in our country i i have confidence at that very sure that something will come out just like the cow's milk from our desi cows is much better compared to the videshi cows so that is a challenge and we have to come out with those results another thing is that primary processing primary processing of spices is very important primary processing of medicinal crops is very important it may not be that important in the food grains but in this it is very much important if we don't care for primary processing then there is no use of building the foundation of the secondary agriculture on it if whatever raw material which is coming to the factories for doing extraction and all other high tech studies if that is not good then what is the use of it and then once that damage happens it is irreparable damage in case of the spices and this kind of uh, medicinal crops so that is why i have chosen the topic and because some policy makers dr alag sundaram is there dr nachiket is there i hope this can go into the policy of the country the what i am going to suggest at the end of my talk so i will go for uh, the slide show uh, see what happens quality of spices if you look at what are those post harvest protocols which influence the quality of the spices that end product quality that is extraction and all those things they are different things they are afterwards because this is the raw material which was we are going to take from the farmers and give it to the factories for doing that high tech extraction and high tech research primary processing harvesting at proper maturity safe harvesting that they we don't damage them at the time of harvest then safe pre treatment because many a times these crops they are sprayed with insecticides or pesticides before they are harvested 
so maybe just to take care of uh, maybe that insect pest attacking them at that time because they are rightly matured and they attract the insects safe drying and sorting and grading and safe storage of raw spices you will find that this aspect of primary processing is done by the farmers there itself and what happens the farmer if he doesn't do it properly outwardly we will see the similar kind of product coming in the market because that paper will be the similar kind of black color and all other things will be visibly will not be known that what damage has taken place in the quality and that is why we want more and more of the small scale micro food processing industries to come up in the production catchment who will have the pack houses not exactly for grinding and masala making that is a secondary thing but they will have the pack houses to collect this material properly from the farmers pack it up nicely put up a traceability in, uh, tag on it because they will be serving uh, maybe the area of one village so that way they can say that where it was grown how it was grown where it was harvested and how it was processed for primary processing and once that is available that will have the market throughout the world because that is the safest of the raw material which they can take and make further use of it then second uh, unit operation or post harvest protocol is grinding most of the spices they are ground if suppose if you lose the quality in first time itself of the primary processing that means almost 3% or 2% of the extractable is gone when they are doing the primary processing which is not correct we don't have proper protocols for primary processing and people are not following it for example i would like to know from iiss iisr that whether they have these protocols in place for the farmers to follow and that is how then it will be taken up by the pack houses second operation is a grinding grinding is such a thing that this is the culprit which has made spices bad because some time back not before covid we had a tendency to say that if you eat more spicy food your stomach upset will take place so we were blaming spices and people had a tendency of using less spices covid has told them that to use it for immunity but by taking less spices they were in fact losing the immunity even for the small cold and cough that they they used to suffer and why it was happening it was because of this unit operation of grinding because it was not done properly so earlier times when our forefathers were using the spices they had all that best of the spices going into their stomach and they had good uh, immunity and good health whereas this time when the ground ground spices are not properly ground and if they are given then they will have only pungency principle and no phytochemicals which are in, which are associated with the spices and third protocol or third important operation is packaging and storage immediately after grinding retail packaging and storage and use of spices at consumer level in a small packs is very much required fortunately in the market now few big industries are coming up and they are doing it the nice the small packs so that every day we can open it up and then use it otherwise also in our house when we bring that 100 grams of ground spices we open it up and keep it open many people don't keep them in the refrigerator that is very much required to put them in the refrigerator that should be one of the recommendations of this workshop should be that the spices don't take them for granted that powder which you get 100 grams once you open it it should preserve its uh, volatiles and that is why keep it in the refrigerator in the well packed manner in resealed manner again and uh, this is what and proper packaging can be happening only when there are small scale units you know the big scale units of course then they have a long supply chain and by the time it goes there some quality damage will take place but this a uh, small micro food processing industries if they are set up, they can do this job in fact at sifet ludhiana when i was there we tried to make tablets out of this the purpose of that was if the the spice is ground and immediately it is made in a tablet form and if there is a blister packaging every day you open one tablet and put it in your curry and you will have all the materials or all the ingredients which are required to be preserved they are there in that with this background i will start my presentation and grinding of spices grinding of spices traditionally how it was done it was wet grinding 
and also the dry grind wet grinding was done by our grandmother with water and immediately before using for food it was ground so there were minimum uh, loss of this essential ingredients which are good for our immunity then it came this uh, capacity increased and people did not have patience to grind the spices just before consuming them or cooking before cooking operations then they started making grinding at one place and distributing the ground spices or powders then they started using hammer mill and attrition mill because hammer mill and attrition mills they were traditionally available for all other mechanical purposes and to adopt them was very easy an attrition mill of course it was uh, very common for making atta from the cereals and also from the pulses and they adopted that for the spices as well and now after looking into the drawbacks of this conventional method temperature going very up and then essential ingredients are volatiles are going away from the spices the people have started thinking of something more in this that is cool grinding or air stream grinding we call it cold grinding that is a cool barrel grinding that those are the experiments have been done and some commercial units of water circulation are available for the people to take it then cryogenic grinding that is the latest of the technology which spice people should be using it next now let us look into the traditional grinding methods this is wet grinding what my grandmother used to do it and your grandmother used to do it and it may be today also in many of the restaurants and dhabas who give the best quality material best uh, uh, culinary property material to the consumers they use this wet grinding by uh, this kind of uh, devices then even for dry grinding because in some cases wet grinding is not possible and not required also in, because wet grinding was required that time only before cooking instantly whereas dry grinding was done just to keep it for few days and even for dry grinding you see that this is the kalbatta we in maharashtra we call it kalbatta in south also there may be some name to it and with this they used to grind it when you grind it like this it will be instantly ground and the temperature build up is not that much here even in the dry grinding you get the advantage of the wet grinding what i have shown on this in this slide conventional grinders conventional methods what i explained in the first uh, slide these are those conventional methods the split grinder or disc mill it is very commonly used to grind the spices and a hammer mill this is also used to grind the spices and this sorry i think i then huh. here what happens why it damages the quality of the spices because the chamber temperature goes up to 95 degrees celsius so much of the heat is generated because of that friction and because of that uh, shearing and because of that size reduction and that is why the temperature goes up and the powder temperature may go up to 65 degrees celsius many a times and when anything which goes above 40 degrees celsius for the spices you are sure to damage this product which may be used further for extraction of very high value compounds but the damage you have already done while grinding it then this is the hammer mill and this is the plate mill okay now the next so this is a little modification to the hammer mill if along with the hammer mill we have the suction blower okay and then that is taken to the cyclone so what happens when you feed the spices to the hammer mill they are always in the fluidized condition because there is air stream which is collecting the air through the sieves taking it in the blower and then taking it to the cyclone as you make this cyclone away from this you have the advantage of the pneumatic conveying of the powdered material when you have this pneumatic conveying or the fluidized bed handling of this material while grinding you have the temperature kept low even though it is the same hammer mill which were used earlier so this is little advantage or little modifications what the, the height has been done and i think this should come into the policy decisions that all other hammer mills which are being used in this country they should be converted into this kind of mills because we had a similar kind of uh, experiment in the rice milling earlier 
because rice meal was by the farmer or from the small industries and they were not bothered about the broken or the loss in the uh, quantity of the rice but the government then made it a policy uh, there was a law made and there was incentive provided for modernization of the rice mills similar kind of uh, uh, is required for the creation of the grinding of spices in the country next is an experiment has been done see that what other areas what other approaches we can do to see that the temperature of the grind material could be kept low so this is the evaporative cooled process or a method they have used here what they did they it is used on the chili because whenever the chili is ground in the hammer mill you cannot stand there so much of uh, this thing will be there uh, commotion will be there so for these chilies uh, which are pre ground and then for grinding this in this one if the you spray atomized water or the spray the water with many very small mist mist you spray the mist not exactly the water but the mist when the mist is there the temperature of the surrounding is immediately reduced and then the material also temperature material temperature also goes down along with that of course a few percentage of the water can be taken up by the material and that may little reduce your grinding efficiency because when you look at theoretical grinding efficiencies you look into the moisture content and the degree of milling and things like that always the low moisture material will grind better but that is not desired in these cases so we need the temperature to be reduced and uh, 30 kg per hour capacity reducing the temperature by 12 degrees suppose if the ambient temperature of the material which is going for grinding is 35 degrees celsius then 12 degrees would be reduced at the rate of 2.1 kg per hour of the water i think this uh, r&d has been done in uh, sri lanka and all those efforts are being made to see that the small scale industries or even in the villages how we can get the good quality product and the capsicum recovery when they studied for this they were found that 15% higher than the conventional grinding the next one this is the study conducted at iifvt what they did that something like this they put their grinder inside the refrigerator so this is refrigeration that means the temperature was reduced of the grinding chamber and this reduction in the grinding chamber temperature and also the raw material temperature because that hopper also is exposed to the freeze uh, refrigerator temperature and when you go for from you can put uh, the chamber temperature and the hopper temperature and the raw material temperature whatever you want that means 0 10 20 and 30 and they studied the effect that when you put the temperature low of the grinding mill by putting them it inside the refrigerator like this the quality of the grinded powder material what we get it is much much better because the temperature doesn't go up even after maybe uh, i think if you can see that about 300 seconds huh? that uh, and it goes up to 42 degree celsius in case where you keep the temperature at zero and that way and then it flattens it doesn't go up but that, that means our aim was bringing the temperature of 40 degree celsius and below for the powder or for the grind that is achieved in this mill and it is a very simple i think it should be commercialized it should be promoted for commercialization uh, this uh, study was done by shelke and dabi in 2019 then they have seen this this is the performance cooling for 60 minutes uh, it is it is it is a pre cooling of uh, i think uh, because of that how i can reduce remove this upper one it is coming in between i think i should do that huh? remove hide how, how i can hide this hide video panel okay huh? hide okay show video panel and uh, uh, i don't know because, because i will go back to that okay uh, i think this is about 
pre cooling of the material which you are grinding for example the turmeric turmeric rhizome if it is cooled before they are subjected to grinding 5 degree 10 degree 15 degrees 20 degrees and 25 degrees then there is advantage of getting higher volatile oils when you grind it from that material energy consumed will also be reduced particle size can also be finer and the grinding temperature you can see that it is if you put the raw material into the refrigerator at 5 degrees celsius and then afterwards you grind it you keep it for maybe half an hour or one hour here they have found that 60 minutes if they keep them Uh, rhizome temperature of 20 degrees celsius uh, at 20 degrees celsius okay not exactly the 5 degrees celsius because that will be too much of the cooling and if that if you can have the surrounding temperature at 20 degrees celsius and if you can keep it for 60 minutes then you have the temperature rise only up to 44 degrees celsius and in case of ambient you see the temperature of the grind goes up to 70 degrees celsius the damage is too much so this is the protocol for example if somebody wants to grind a turmeric let they them slice them okay and then after slicing put them in the refrigerator and then after temperature is lowered enough then put them for grinding and that way you are reducing the damage to the powder so that in future whenever they further they give that raw material they will have higher extraction efficiency then this is a uh, meal this, this is available in our country also in rajkot or in gujarat some places uh, the manufacturers are manufacturing such type of units where the grinding chamber is uh, annular and in that the cold water or chilled water is circulated this is a chinese machine where they have a pump there simple tulu pump which circulates the water chilled water and the chilled water to maintain it what you have to do is frequently keep on adding uh, uh, ice into that one and it remains chilled and when you circulate around the grinding uh, chamber you reduce the temperature of the grind and reduce the temperature of powder and the material is uh, you we have in our country they say that uh, ltg low temperature grinding so this is what it can we can achieve the low temperature grinding so that the powder temperature can be kept below 40 degrees celsius so just like rice milling rice milling what they did they had a huller mill they asked them to go for under runner dish shaler and under runner dish shalers they asked them to go for rubber roll shalers and the modernization was done in the stages we can also do that directly we cannot ask someone who is grinding spices to go for cryogenic grinding even iisr i don't think they have the cryogenic grind when the institutions cannot have how can the private party can have the cryogenic grinding but these are the stages in which we can help them to go if they can adopt this kind of machines rather than those other grinders next this is a cryogenic grinding this is a schematic diagram of the cryogenic grinder very simple to look at very easy to manufacture you have one freezing hopper then uh, uh, there the raw material is frozen below the glass transition temperature so it becomes brittle and then because of the brittleness the oil which is there in the spices it doesn't uh, what you call create problem during grinding because in general grinding you will have that problem and you have to keep on cleaning your grinding machine frequently so this is the freezing offer you can see that number 1 then the screw feeder afterwards the a frozen material is fed with the like screw conveying into the mill this is a pin mill it could be a pin mill or a hammer mill you in cfet we have the two both mills are there hammer as well as pin hammer mill one stage and then pin mill is the second stage then thereafter it is conveyed pneumatically into the cyclone and then it is collected for packaging here below and that air again cooled air is again circulated back to the freezer because in the freezer you are putting liquid nitrogen you are blasting liquid nitrogen at minus 195 degrees celsius but this spent air it is also about uh, 50 to 70 degrees celsius and then outlet temperature is 5 degrees celsius and product temperature then in that case even after which is brought out 
is 12 to 15 degrees Celsius. And this is the thing we should introduce in our spice grinding, uh, what you call uh, the establishments wherever we have. Government should come out with a policy for modernization of spice grinding by introducing these machines. Then advantages of cryogenic grinding. Cryogenic grinding improves the aroma by minimizing the loss of essential oils. The loss, otherwise it takes three to 10%. And it's a huge loss. It is not that much in that. And in that, if you can lose about three to 10%, what will happen when it, during storage and then handling, and it is again going more, which is approximately 15 to 40, the loss is 15 to 43% in case of conventional processing. It is too high. It is three to 10% loss, sorry. This was a loss in cryogenic grinding. Of course, any grinding operation will have some loss associated with it because we are exposing it and uh, finally grinding it. But compared to 15 to 43% losses in conventional grinding, three to 10% loss is nothing. Spices are ground to the thickness of 50 microns as compared to the size and range of 500 to 1000 microns in conventional grinding processes. In conventional grinding, we cannot grinding fine. There is a limitation. And here, whereas in this case, we have we can go up to 50 microns. And if it is packaged properly, it is a raw material for extraction industry to be used in automatic where it is not exposed outside. Prices processed using cryo grinding has better natural color compared to the conventional processes. Finer particle size can be achieved without aroma loss and a natural color change. Otherwise, it generally happens that whenever you have this, you go for grinding more finer in multiple passes, for example, in one pass, you get this particle size. You just put it again. In second pass, you will get another particle size. But by doing that, you are losing on those uh, essential ingredients. And here, it is, doesn't happen. Overall, grinding capacity can be increased two to three times as compared to the process equipment will not have thermal fatigue. Because in other equipments, we need to clean up that sieve because of the oil content in the spices. And there is a thermal fatigue. We have to stop that. When the temperature goes up to 95 degrees Celsius, we will not continue to grind it. Then you will have to stop it for half an hour or one hour and then again start it. Whereas in this case, you don't have to stop because it is naturally uh, very low temperature grinding which is taking place. So the capacity goes by through to three times. If somebody invests on putting up this unit, he doesn't lose because his capacity will be much higher. This method of grinding enhances unlocking of natural flavors and easy dispersion of the same and controls the flavor strength. Actually, in this process, because the particle size is too fine, the unlocking of natural flavors takes place. And they are very easy to disperse. For example, when you cook something, uh, we put our spices along with cooking. Why? Because when it is cooked, getting cooked, with that temperature and moisture and that way, the essential ingredients from the spices are getting extracted into that dish. But whereas once you have this kind of material, we can even put it at the end of this cooking, not while cooking, but at the end, we can add the spice, just mix it up and we can have the pleasure of having all essential ingredients of the spices in that. Then this is comparison of conventional or traditional grinding. I will say conventional grinding with the cryogenic grinding. Here, energy consumption is very low. Throughput is much higher. There is no clogging of mill. Minimal volatile losses will take place. Motor is also of low capacity. It is not very heavy duty. Heavy duty motor, it will increase the temperature. Grinding of soft material is possible because our spices are not really very hard. Grinding of soft material is, spicy, is possible because industrially it is used for other uh, raw materials also in the plastic industry and things like that. Grinding of soft material is possible. Fire risk is none, air pollution is none, and microbial load does not exist. Whereas in uh, traditional method, when the ground material is exposed, even for a short time, till we take it to the packaging machine, and that much time of 10, 20 minutes or one hour, and because that handling is required and then that microbial load is possible. And even, for example, there is a uh, oil in that one and you need to uh, clean up uh, the sieve. And because of that, some material may be stuck inside the grinding chamber and that will attract the microbial load. 
and that way the microbial load is possible in the conventional and is not possible in microbial load in this cryogenic grinding because it is clean grinding next this is the machine or this is the cryogenic grinder developed at cfit ludhia uh, i like to promote cfit technologies very much everywhere i go because these are the technologies which are suitable for micro food processing enterprises if you think about the cryogenic grinding which is imported from germany or those kind of places by the multinationals and big business houses it cost in lakhs it is not possible for the small scale entrepreneur to think about also that he should have a cryogenic grinder but this is the machine developed at cfit ludhiana its capacity is 30 to 35 kilograms per hour it is very convenient and very good capacity it uses both hammer and pail mill and as i showed you in the earlier diagram the schematics of the cryogenic grinder so this way it is uh, has been built so that there is a freezer then a conveyor for the material into the mill then grinding then recirculation of uh, the natural uh, this uh, uh, the gas it is liquid nitrogen and then collecting the material without exposing outside into the packaging bags or whatever packaging material you used so this is the machine i think here they don't have circulation of uh, uh, liquid uh, what is called the nitrogen gas that provision is not i don't see it here and if uh, i think they can work on that as well and see that that temperature which we get because the gas of uh, li liquid nitrogen when it gets into gas the temperature will very low and that can be used as a pre treatment for cooling the material before freezing add that as one of the developments further and this unit will be taken up by the entrepreneurs for grinding very easily only thing is that our message should reach to the entrepreneurs then this is uh, the performance of this machine effect of grinding methods on recovery of essential oil and oleo resin content in coriander genotypes because as uh, jayashree told it was a nip project so that means there were many institutions involved in collaborating and uh, some institutions were might have been involved in just uh, uh, quality analysis of this product because uh, iisr uh, they must have done this job or maybe the seed spices industry the institute they must have done this job and they have very clearly indicated that intact seeds whatever may be the quality the cryo grinding grinding powder also has the same quality not much damage for example the first line you can see that volatile oils were 0.25 in intact seed whereas they were only they were 0.23 in the cryo grinding and whereas in a normal grinding it was they were only 0.10 same thing from oleo resins also that cryo ground it was 13.80 nano it was this and uh, uh nano it was 11.77 non non nano it was 11.77 oleo resin and here 13.80 and this one you can see that uh, it is uh, in different varieties it is a different in some varieties it was 19.58 in the cryo ground material whereas only 10.38 into the conventional one so it is performance wise also it has proven that this is the best uh, modification or intervention what our scientists have done into the spice grinding or spice industry next is total phenolics and flavonoid content in methanol crude and extract of different genotypes of coriander yield cryo grinding seed it is this much and non cryo grinding seed which is that much that means 3.95 and 3.59 okay and the, you can see the difference eh? and uh, that proves that the cryo grinding is uh, wonderful next is antioxidant content dp ph scavenging and all those quality analysis what has been done at these institutions i think uh, i have to cut it off so with this i conclude my presentation and i give these recommendations for the group 
or for the committee to put up because there is a need to develop cool grinding equipment for spices suitable for micro food industry though i have shown some of the machines or some of the developments in the machinery but that is not enough most of these all mechanical engineering departments in iits and uh, agriculture engineering departments they should work on developing a very 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 economical and feasible cool grinding machine it need not be cryo grinding it may be with some other concept just like i have shown you earlier in the slides the cool grinding offers substantial quality improvement over the conventional grind at least that much upgradation of for uh, the grinding technology should take place in our spice grinding industry the indigenously developed cryo grinder at sifet is effective and affordable for quality grinding of spices in production catchment so promote it and similar to rice mill modernization the government should provide incentives for cryo grinding of spices there should be a policy of the ministry of food processing industries they should in a phased manner this change because we are the spice country our spices are the best in the world and we provide 70% of the world required there are competitors they have come but those competitors can be avoided if we can have the best quality spices from india because people would like to buy it from india rather than the other countries where they have been recently introduced with this i thank organizers for giving me this opportunity and share my thoughts and uh, to promote cryo grinding in the spice industry thank you very much